What's going on everybody? Today's Swift tutorial is actually going to kick off a three-part series on some basic map kit functionality. Uh, today we're going to be kicking off with finding a user's location on a map. You know that little blue dot you see in the apps that show you where you're standing uh, based on GPS. So we're going to show you how to do that and the other two parts of the series is going to be finding an address using reverse geolocation and then getting directions to that location from the user's current locations. But again that's part two and three. Part one, this video is just all about finding the user's location. Let's get started. So normally I walk through the starter project, but we're pretty much starting from scratch here. There's not much to say. So the first thing we're going to do is display our map. And to do that, let's do Command Shift L to pull up our library. As you can see, I already have a map here. So drag the map kit view onto the screen. Now I want to pin it to the edges. Uh, because I want the map to bleed all the way to the edge of the screen and not stop at the safe area, I'm going to pin my constraints uh, to the view and not the safe area. So I know my constraints are hidden a little bit due to my face. I apologize, but it's just pinning it to the view, not the safe area, uh, all around uh, with zeros. So let's go ahead and pin it to the view, zero, pin it to the view, and zero, and add four constraints. As you can see, it fills up the entire screen. Now I need to uh, set my map, uh, map view delegate, so control drag from the map view to the view controller, and then set the delegate. You can do this in code, um, just choosing not to, but if you like to, you know, do you. Uh, so let's bring up the map screen, hold option, click on map screen to bring it up in my assistant editor, and I need to create an outlet from my map view. So control drag from the map view to here, and just call it map view, hit connect, and uh, so right now I'm probably going to get an error because I don't know, or Xcode doesn't know what MK map view is, that is because I have yet to import map kit, import map kit. There we go, hit command B to build that, and now Xcode should stop complaining. Uh, so that is basically the storyboard setup. And again, like I said, if you wanted to do the delegate uh, in code, you could do map view dot delegate, delegate uh, equals self, and that would be to do it in code. I don't like clutter in my code, so I prefer to do that in storyboard. Other developers like to see it, you know, obviously displayed right there. So again, do you, personal preference. So let me get rid of the assistant editor so the screen's not so cramped. Go back to the map screen. Uh, so here we are, basically I just have my view to load and my outlet to map view. So let's go ahead and run that to check that out. And as you can see, there's my map. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, although we don't see the user location and we're not zoomed in, we're gonna get to that. So there's essentially three major steps to what we're gonna do today. That is get permissions to show location. And that is a little bit of a hassle. We're gonna talk about getting through that. Uh, show the user's location on the map and then also update the user's location as they move and then move our map with the user as they move. So because we are dealing with user location, we are going to need to import core location. And because I know I'm gonna to have to conform to the uh, CL location manager delegate, let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, and if you know my style, you know I like to do all my delegates uh, in their own extension. So map screen, and then I'm gonna to conform to CL location manager uh, delegate. And then there's two methods we're gonna to conform to. Like I said, we're going to update as the user moves. So did update uh, location, there you go, there's that. And just gonna put in some, uh, you know, we'll be back here. Uh, and then I also need to, uh, when my uh, permission authorization change, so uh, did change authorization it's down there. Uh, and then again, we'll be back. So uh, just stubbed out the methods I know that I'm going to use. And, and again, the reason I know I'm going to use it is because I know I want to do something every time the location updates. And then I know I, know I want to do something when the user changes the uh, authorization. So remember how I said permissions were kind of a hassle? That's because there's there's multiple layers. So the very first layer we have to worry about, like you're gonna see here on the screen, is the user can disable location services like device-wide, like not just to your app. So we wanna make sure that location services are even available. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out some code and we'll come back and discuss it. Okay, so here's the code real quick. Let's walk through it. So it's a function called check location services. And then we do if CL location manager dot location services is enabled. So if we can do it, uh, it's a blank. We'll come back here. We need to uh, basically set up our location manager. And then uh, else, so I'm not gonna do this error handling just for the sake of the time on the tutorial, but if you know this was turned off, you would wanna show the user uh, an alert saying like, hey, you don't have your location services enabled, You know, go here to turn them on. Because there's nothing worse than when your app doesn't work and then the user doesn't know why. Especially when in this case, it's like the user's fault, right? Because they turned it off. So you wanna make sure you let them know what's going on. Okay, so back to this setting up of our uh, location manager. So the first thing I need to do is actually get a location manager uh, reference here. So let location manager 
equals CL location uh, manager. And then let's go ahead and initialize that. And then I'm gonna write a function real quick uh, to set up location manager. And that is going to, I need to set my delegate first so I can, uh, you know, fire off these delegate methods here. So let's go ahead and set that delegate, uh, location manager dot delegate uh, equals self. And then also we want to determine what accuracy we want and we're gonna go for the best. So location manager dot desired uh, accuracy equals, and you start typing best and then it should pop up. So, you know, case CLL location accuracy best. So that is our location manager setup. So we are going to now do that here. And we're gonna we're gonna build in this in, on line 33 here. We're gonna build more code in this block, but for now, uh, we don't want to set up our location manager until we know that like location services are even enabled. All right, so that is like I said, the top level of the permissions. Like, can the device even do it? So the next level of permissions is what permissions did the user give our app? You know those look you know permission pop-ups that pop up, allow, don't allow for like notifications. We're gonna pop that up, and this is where we determine like did they give us permission? Did they not give us permission? So I'm gonna go ahead and write out that function, and we'll come back. All right, so here we are on line 40 with this function called check location authorization. And basically, uh, we just check what the authorization status is, and there's gonna be five cases that we need to handle uh, that we're gonna talk about each one. So this authorized when in use. Well, first, let's back up and talk about authorized when in use versus authorized always. So what authorized in in use means is basically when your app is open, that is the only time the app is authorized to get that user's location. Uh, whereas authorized always means that the app can get, get your location when the app is in the background. So think of an app like Maps, you know, they're going to always need your location, even if the Maps is in the background, because, you know, when you're getting directions somewhere and you're walking around, you know, the, the map always wants your location. So uh, I wouldn't use this unless you absolutely have to, uh, just because users are, you know, very wary about their privacy and giving away that information. Uh, typically, authorized when in use is probably what you're going to go with. But again, it depends on your app. So for us, this is our happy path or whatever. This is what we definitely want uh, to do. So we're going to do map stuff if we have this permissions. Uh, what denied is here, oh, oh, I still need my break statements. Forgot about that until I put actual code in there. I'm going to need that. Uh, so denied means we popped up the thing and they hit not allow. Like they said, don't give this uh, permissions. The bad thing about this is once they deny you once, you can't pop that uh, pop up up again. If they want to turn on location permissions, they actually have to go into like general settings, location and all that stuff and turn it on for your app. It's kind of a pain. So, uh, but here uh, again, we're just going to show them an alert, letting them know what to do. So show alert, uh, instructing them how to turn on uh, permissions. Uh, that is if we were denied. Now, if we're not determined, here we're gonna actually put in some code. This is, so not determined means they haven't picked allow or not allow. So this is when, hold on Xcode. <laughs> so this is when we are going to actually request the permission. So again, that is just off the location manager. So location manager dot request. Uh, and you see the two options I have always authorization or when in use authorization. So we're going to do when in use. Uh, so again, if it's not determined, we ask permission. Uh, if it's restricted, now I actually had to look up what restricted is, so we'll do that real quick together. But basically restricted means is the user cannot change this app status, possibly due to active restrictions such as parental control. So like I said, imagine like a child, their parent doesn't want them to actually, you know, ask or allow their location to be out there. So parents can restrict that. So again, uh, if it's restricted, we want to just, you know, show an alert, uh, <laughs> letting them know you know, what's up. Uh, and again, uh, always authorized. We're not asking for this, so we can just go ahead and leave this as a break. So uh, the three major, or I'm sorry, four of them we're gonna handle. Again, this is what we really want. We wanna be authorized, and this is where we're gonna do all our map stuff. We'll come back to this. If it's denied, tell them, hey, you didn't give us permission. Here's how you go get permission. If it's not determined, we ask permission. If it's restricted, we let them know what's up, and then we're not asking for always. So there you go. Now, when do we want to call check location authorization? Well, that is again, after we have uh, on here on line 32, we check to see if location services are enabled. So again, if it's enabled device wide, we go ahead and set up our location manager and then we go ahead and check location authorization. Now there is one final piece of the puzzle when it comes to permissions. Remember when I said permissions were kind of a hassle? Uh, you have to go into your plist and add a new uh, item here. Just click the plus button and then just ty type in privacy and the, all the privacy stuff should pop up. Uh, scroll down to location when in use uh, authorization. And then here's where you type in a string and this is where you like explain to the user why you need their permissions and you wanna be very gentle so you can get them to say yes. Um, but you know, for now, I'll just put in this is why we need your location. Uh, so there you have that. 
Back to the uh, main uh, app screen. So let's go ahead and call uh, check location services in view to load, check location services. So that'll trigger all this chain of events. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we get our pop-up. And bam, there you go. Uh, allow user location to access your location while you are using the app. Again, because we did when in, when in use. And then this is our little string here. This is why we need your location. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and hit allow. And uh, we haven't done any more code yet. So here's you know our map. And that pretty much handles our permissions. So that is a, the very big first step. And like I said, that was kind of the hassle. Now let's start to do the map stuff as you see here. So first thing we wanna do is uh, once we have authorization, we want to uh, map view dot show user location equals true. This is what is going to pull up the little blue dot on the map. So uh, let's go ahead and run it. And now we should see our little blue dot. And there we are. You can see it is kind of in the you know North, Northern California, San Francisco area. That's where I am at. So just with one line of code, we got our little blue dot. And if you don't like this line of code, if you go to the storyboard, click on your map view, and then in the inspector here, you see this little checkbox uh, user location that I'm checking on and off right here. Uh, obviously, the checkbox does the same thing as that line of code. Uh, I'm going to leave the line of code in there just for the clarity of the tutorial. But you know, if you're working on your project and you just want to kind of remove some clutter, you can just click this box and get rid of uh, this line of code right here. You don't have to do that. So as you saw, that was a very zoomed out view of like the entirety of North America. We want to actually zoom in on the user's location. So for that, I'm going to write a function and we'll come back and explain it. All right, so here we are. The function is called center view on user location, pretty explicit in what it does. So because location manager dot location is an optional, we're gonna go ahead and unwrap that with if let into a variable called location. So uh, once we have a location or if it's not nil, we're gonna go ahead and create a region. So that's this uh, MK is short for map kit, uh, coordinate region. We're gonna initialize it uh, using uh, the center, which is the location, which is our, our user's locations coordinate. It's a latitude and a longitude uh, and then here in latitudinal meters, this is where we're setting like the how big, how, how much we want to be zoomed in. And right now it's in meters. So we have 10,000 meters. So we're going to use this a lot. So let's actually go ahead and create a uh, variable here. So let's uh, region in meters equal, and I'm putting 10,000 uh, 10, in. So let's go ahead and substitute that there and that there. Again, because we are going to use this number uh, a lot. So uh, let's come back here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna tell me region of meters needs to be a double uh, type inferences, just calls it an int. So cast that as a double and we are good to go there. So again, what, what this line is doing is it's, I need a center, which is the user's location, and then how much do I wanna zoom in? So if I go ahead and call now uh, center view on user's location, I wanna call that uh, down here in my, where I was gonna do my map stuff. So center view on user location. So now that's going to get called as long as we have the permission uh, when in use. So let's go ahead and run this and check that out. And there, as you can see, we are more zoomed in onto San Francisco. Again, that is 10,000 meters. Uh, again, a higher number would zoom you know, further out and then a smaller number would zoom more in. So you can tweak how much zoom you want by just dialing in that number. So that's it for just displaying the user's location on a map. But remember the final step was to update the map view as the user moves. Like if you're, if you're picturing this map right here, imagine the user was driving across San Francisco. We want the dot and the map to move with it. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I stop that here, uh, the, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna start updating the location. So if we do here again in the uh, authorized when use case, cause we only wanna do this if we have permission to do it. Uh, so it's location manager dot start uh, updating location. So what this is doing is this is starting to fire off uh, this uh, delegate method down here. This did update locations. So again, every time the location updates, it's returning an array of CL locations. So you can kind of actually build a history of locations as well, but we're just going to focus on the last known location so we can just keep updating uh, the view. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go and write out some code and explain it in a bit. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here on line 75 is to guard against there being no location. So basically if locations.last, which returns an optional is nil, we're just going to return and nothing is going to happen below this line. And let me talk about guard statements for a quick 20 second aside. I like to write my guard statements as one line like this. Sometimes you'll see people you know, prefer them you know, on two lines, whatever, like this. The reason I like it on one line uh, when possible 
is because I look at guard statements like a line in the sand, right? As long as this condition, if this conditional is not met, that's the line in the sand. Nothing below this happens. Whereas if it is met, then you can go ahead and proceed. So I don't know, it's just a visual thing. I like them being on one line just for that reason. So I know if I see guard, it's like there's a there's a chance nothing below the guard happens. So anyway, that's that little, little side note. So what we're doing here is we're creating a center because we want to know what where the map view center is. So the center is we're just making a uh, location coordinate 2D and that is the location, latitude and longitude. So we're just basically getting the lat and long of the location and that is the center. And again, that location is the user's last known location in this did update location. And then just like before, when we centered uh, the map on the user, uh, we're creating a region and then the region takes in a center, which is the uh, location we just created. Again, that's the Latin long of the last known user's location. And then we need to say how wide the view is. And again, this is our region in meters, the 10,000 that we used above. And the reason we chose 10,000 is because we want it to stay consistent, right? We don't want the map to be zooming in or out as the user moves. Um, I don't know, unless you want a weird feature like that, where if the user moves and you really zoom in, you could do that, maybe that's cool. But uh, for the most part, we, we want our map view to stay the same as the user uh, is moving. So uh, again, this, this function here fires off every time the user's location updates. And then the last thing we wanna implement, just a little touch up here is, so basically this is another delegate method whenever the authorization changes. So uh, whenever it changes, we want to make sure we check uh, location authorization. This way, if authorization changes, it's gonna run through this switch statement and we're handling each of our cases uh, accordingly. So the reason you need this is it, it you don't see it when you're building it as you go, but the very first time you pop up that permissions and you hit allow, like we stopped our simulator and we started doing other stuff. But uh, if you didn't have this did change authorization, uh, it wouldn't do anything. You would hit allow and you would still see the far out map. Now, uh, when that pops up and you hit allow, now this fires off because we changed authorizations and then all this stuff fires off, we zoom into the user's location. So uh, just a little maintenance there. And that pretty much does it. Let's do a quick uh, wrap up because I know we were bouncing around a lot. So I'll do a quick summary on the order of the flow here. So again, we fire up the screen, view did load fires off, uh, check location services fires off, so down here is where we are checking to see, again, this is device wide location, like, like you're seeing here in this video. Again, the user can turn location services off for the entire device. So we need to check that level of permissions. If that comes back, we're good to go. Now we go ahead and set up our location manager. And then based on that, we check our uh, location authorizations. And now remember all the cases of, you know, are we authorized? Are we denied? Has it not yet been determined? Are we restricted? And then we act accordingly based on those uh, authorizations. And then uh, here in the delegate method here, this did update locations. Every time the user location updates, we're adjusting our map view to, so the user is in the center and then we adjust the map view accordingly. So yeah, so that's how you show the user's location on a map and update it as they move. So that's it. That's displaying a user's location on a map. And again, stay tuned for parts two and three where we find the address of a different location and then get directions to that address. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here or if you found this video at all useful, consider subscribing. I put out new videos all the time.